It's time to sit back, relax, and listen to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life will inspire, motivate, and empower you. Live your best life now. Listen, learn, think, and decide. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. And now, here's your host, Joan Herman. Welcome to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. You're listening to us in your neighborhood from coast to coast and around the world. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Joan Herman, author, speaker, and your host. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life brings you interviews with some of the most inspirational and influential people in the world. It's our goal to educate and empower you so you can live your best life now. Thank you for taking time for yourself, and thank you for letting us be a part of your life. We have another great show for you today. Joining me is Dr. Joan Borisenko, a Harvard-trained cell biologist and health psychologist who is the author of the new book, The Plant Plus Diet Solution, Personalized Nutrition for Life. According to Dr. Borisenko, when you've got the right information, you can make powerful choices to change your life. Dr. Borisenko has a doctorate in cell biology from Harvard Medical School and is a licensed clinical psychologist, New York Times bestselling author, a journalist, and a radio personality. Welcome, Dr. Borsenko. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks so much for having me, Joan. What a great show and what a great service you do. Well, thank you. And, and Doctor, we're very happy to have you here because your work is everything that we talk about on the show, that living your best life means caring for your mind, body, soul, and spirit. And because of your education and training, you bring the science behind it. And that's very exciting information. So many people today are emotionally and physically exhausted. They're really burnt out, stressed out, and fried. And the way they feel sometimes leads them to believe that they're depressed. And then what happens is they end up on medication. What do you believe is happening to many people in today's world? Well, there are several things there. First of all, I was so burned out myself, Joan, that I wrote a book called Fried a couple of years ago. And people really respond to it. We're a fried culture. And fried is, you know, more than just a name. It really does sap your motivation and you end up depressed. uh, And it's not a good state to be in. And I think we're simply way too busy. There's so much to do that people feel squeezed out of their own life. And here's the counterintuitive part. The more service-oriented you are, the more you really want to help and change the world, the more you will give away your time absolutely relentlessly until your life disappears and you find that, you know, the very source of wisdom, the root of inner wisdom, and I'm taking that to, <laughs> that term from the former, uh, the late Catholic priest, Thomas Merton, mm-hmm. who was trying to bring actually meditation back to the church. He said, you know, when you're busy and you want to help everyone in everything, you kill the root of inner wisdom that makes your work fruitful. And that's exactly what happens. So I think it's important for all of us to just notice on a scale of 1 to 10 where one is absolutely exhausted, feeling like, you know, your cord has been pulled out (laughs) and Mm -hmm. you're just an appliance that's dead. And 10 is really juicy, where are you? And when you get below 5 on that scale... You need to really pay attention to yourself. Start to take some time off. People are much more productive after vacations. And then start doing things every day, walking in nature or meditating or things that really rejuvenate you to keep that root of inner wisdom going. Now, Joan, I often joke to my friends about being brain fried. And I I really do feel that way most of the time. But it's, it's not a joke. It's a very serious problem. And you just wrote a book about diet and nutrition and overhaul health and wellness. What impact does diet have on burnout and depression? I mean, when we're fried, that's the time that we usually grab something quick that makes us feel good. And that's really the worst thing we can do, isn't it? That is exactly right. Because fast food is, uh, you know, really a big contributor to poor health and being fried. And You know, when I wrote my new book, The Plant Plus Diet Solution, I wrote it because my husband and I both had some health problems, and we decided to adopt 
you know, a diet that was supposed to be good for our hearts, ultra low fat, high carb. And it turned out that it made us worse. And that's what sent me back to the drawing board to take a look at diet. And what I discovered is there is no one size fits all diet. There's an entire new field of personalized nutrition. And while I was discovering what worked best for my body and helping my husband figure out what worked best for him, I came across a lot of interesting statistics, including the fact that the millennial generation is the most depressed and anxious generation that has ever been. And part of that is not just lifestyle and being plugged in and, you know, social networking rather than face-to-face contact and all that. A lot of it has to do with diet. And here is huge news, Joan. You know, about 10 years ago, scientists got interested in our gut bacteria. Now we know that we're eating not just for ourselves, we're feeding our gut bacteria. And we're actually, this is an amazing thing, 10% mammalian cells and we're 90% bacterial. 99% of our DNA is bacterial DNA. And if we're growing the wrong kind of bacteria in our guts, not only can we develop a variety of different diseases and also become obese, but Our gut bacteria make the majority of our neurotransmitters. So if you're eating fast food, if you're too busy, you're not taking care of yourself, you're not feeding enough vegetables and fruits, you deprive your gut microbes of the fiber that you need to be happy. And the result is that you feel burned out. So it's a catch-22. We get busy, we eat poorly, we get more anxious, depressed, burnt out, less efficient, And then we have less time to cook. So here's what you got to do every day to have one pound of vegetables and fruits. And then you can personalize it from there. That's what the plus and the plus diet is. Some people need more protein. Some can eat grains. Some can't. Some eat meat. Some can't. But we all need at least a pound of fruit and vegetables a day. So if you just do this, have a great big salad for lunch with as many veggies of as many colors as you can. Eat another cup or so of vegetables during the day. Definitely eat an apple every day. And you're going to find that you're much better and mix those processed foods. Get rid of them because they're a big contributor to burnout and depression and anxiety. Now, Joan, you mentioned personalized nutrition. Is this when you and one of your friends goes on the exact same eating plan, one loses weight, one doesn't? How do we know what our metabolism needs in weight loss? How can we go about figuring out how to personalize a nutritional plan? Well, you know, there are more and more genetic testing companies coming up, but I tell people you can only get so far with that. It's an itty-bitty baby science. But just going to your own doctor and asking for a couple of tests that I'll mention can help a lot. The main thing in personalizing diet, the first thing, is that some of us are better able to burn carbs than others. And the result of if you're not so good at handling carbs is you become insulin resistant. And that gives rise to a lot of our not only obesity and diabetes, but other chronic conditions. So ask your doctor for these tests, Uh, fasting blood glucose, fasting insulin, hemoglobin A1C, which is a measure of blood sugar over the past couple of months. And then ask your doctor um, for a nuclear magnetic resonance test called NMR by Liposcience or he can or she can recommend a similar test. That actually gives you a composite readout on how insulin sensitive you are, what your blood lipids are like. And so really from a single blood test, you can find out how many carbs you should be eating. But what we do know is that the average American eats about three times as much carbohydrate as recommended. And here's the fact. A high-carb diet is actually a high-fat diet. More carbs that you, than you can burn get stored as fat and as a kind of saturated fat that is the worst type for your health. So what we need to do is eat more fruits and vegetables, whole foods, fewer carbs, uh, what I call a carb-reasonable diet, 
And then beyond that, in the Plant Plus Diet Solution, I show you how to reboot your diet for 28 days, eliminate those carb cravings, and uh, clean up your diet. Then you can start to personalize it by adding back some of the things that were eliminated on the reboot. For example, unless you're carb resistant, you can try adding back some whole grains. Some people tolerate those well, others poorly but you'll be able to tell by keeping track of your medical symptoms. And I've got a wonderful medical symptom checklist that was put together by a friend of mine at Harvard and will help you really understand what your response to food is. And it's the same with other things in your diet. How do you respond to dairy? How do you respond to soy? And so, essentially, you need to become your own lab rat, Joan. Mm -hmm. I'd show people just how to do it. And I can tell you since now it's been about three years that I've I've researched that book, and my husband and I customized our own diets. And our lab tests, our happiness, our life, our weight, Mm -hmm. and our medical symptoms have all improved tremendously. And this is something anybody can do once you know enough to understand what's science and what's ridiculous hype, and there's plenty of the latter out there, believe me. You know, Joan, so many people today are on a budget, and people tend to think that to eat healthily means that they have to spend a small fortune on their food, and that's why I think they tend to go toward the the processed food, which is a little bit less expensive. But if someone is on a budget, how can a family eat organically or more healthily and still maintain that budget? Oh, you know, here's the thing. The average American, it turns out, wastes about $2,500 a year on food that rots in the fridge and that gets thrown out. So simply by organizing yourself and seeing what's in the fridge, you can save a lot of money. All food does not have to be organic. The Environmental Working Group, you can go to ewg.org and look up the Dirty Dozen Plus and the Clean 15. And in the Dirty Dozen Plus, they show you which are the foods that have high pesticide residues. You wouldn't want to eat or feed your kids foods that are covered with pesticides. And those include common things like kale and strawberries and apples and peaches. Those need to be bought organic. But the Clean 15, you know, fruits with thick peels, um, melons, Uh, onions. There are a variety of foods that are fine when they're conventionally grown. They're low in pesticides. Then the other thing I find is we're all busy. You can cook twice a week and cook big pots of wonderful things based on vegetables and containing the plus foods that are right for you, whether it's beef stew or a chicken stew or a tofu dish. And you're going to find it costs very little to cook that kind of food, which is mostly plants. And you're going to save quite a bit of money doing it. Joan, very quickly before we run out of time, your work has embodied, as I said in the beginning, teaching people how to care for the whole person, the mind, body, soul, and spirit. What are some strategies? If you could take the body of your work and sum it up, what are some strategies that our listeners can follow to get their body in harmony emotionally, physically, mentally, and spiritually? You know, you have to attend to all those different levels, Joan. And from the simple physical level, not only is it really important to eat right and eat right for your own unique physical makeup, but exercise is practically a panacea. And what we're finding, for example, with all the new research on trauma is that rather than start with the mind and hope to affect the body, when you do good things for the body, it actually affects the mind. The two are inseparable. It's one body mind. I think it's also very, very important to find ways that you can rest your mind uh, and let your body come to a natural balance, get the stress off the system. And that might include meditation or listening to music, you know, Last night, my husband and I just sat and listened to classical music, and ah, it was a wonderful way to go to bed because sleep is very important. And so it's important, don't watch scary movies or television at all right before sleep. Read a book or 
listen to music. I mean, this is not um, rocket science. It's common sense. And then for many people, starting the day with inspirational reading or prayer or qigong or yoga is a very, very important part of things. And then there's social support. You know, human beings, we're social animals, and we help to regulate each other. So we need to make time to be with the people that we love and to be with friends. And that really helps keep life in balance, as do hobbies. You know, this is, uh, I have to say, I'm picking up my guitar again and going (laughs) to all the folk songs when I was growing up, and that is a great mind-body-spirit practice, is to make music yourself. The book is The Plant Plus Diet Solution, Personalized Nutrition for Life by Dr. Joan Borsenko. If you'd like more information about Joan, you can visit her website, joanborsenko.com. That's J-O-A-N-B-O-R-Y-S-E-N-K-O.com, joanborsenko.com. Joan, thank you so much for being here with us today. As I said in the beginning, your work embodies what we talk about here on the show, and you bring that science to the table, and that really provides wonderful insight and information for all of us to help us learn to achieve emotional, physical, spiritual health and well-being. So thank you for being here. You're welcome. Thanks for having me, Joan. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Joan Herman, host of Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Did you know that Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life has a free monthly digital magazine that can be read online or emailed to your inbox? Every month, nationally recognized leaders in their field provide information to educate, inspire, and motivate you. We believe in a holistic approach to life, incorporating mind, body, and spirit. Check out a copy of Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life 24-7. Visit CYACYL.com and be sure to tell your friends. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you found the show informative. At Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life, we believe that knowledge is power. Take what you've learned, apply it, and live your best life now. Remember that the information provided are the opinions of our guests and should never replace the advice of a professional who knows your personal situation. If you'd like more information, visit our website, cyacyl.com. That stands for Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. While on the site, listen to past shows on demand, read the digital magazine, take part in the book club, and be sure to follow the show on Facebook and Twitter. Until next time, this is Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in.